all right so in my previous video as you saw that i showed how you can use a uhf system and connect it to your flysky radio by using the dsc port that is one way of how you can connect a uhf system to your radio but there's also another method and it's a better way of connecting the uhf module so so that's what this video will be about and and basically what we are doing is we are using a 2.4 gigahertz receiver and using it as a relay to transmit our radio signal to the UHF transmitter and it has a few advantages over the wire method that I showed you guys yesterday so so usually when you connect a wire like this you are pretty much restricted on how far you can have the UHF transmitter away from your radio or usually you attach it somewhere on the back side and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that but but when you use a relay system uh, you can actually place the UHF transmitter a lot further from your radio and and you can also place the UHF transmitter somewhere high so that you can enhance the transmission of the UHF signal and and your UHF receiver can also get better reception so Plus the setup is a lot cleaner than having to use these wires. So let me just show you directly how you can do that and and it applies to almost all UHF systems. It doesn't matter which UHF system you have. So like I said you can use it for a Dragon Link for your Easy UHF, a TBS Crossfire, I have the MFT link. Uh, you just name any UHF transmitter there will be a way to use a receiver, a 2.4 GHz receiver and use it as a relay. So and similarly if you have the FR Sky or any other radio like the Radio Master whatever the process will be the same it's just how you implement a few things here and there so so the very first thing is the 2.4 gigahertz receiver that we're using I have this Flysky FSI A10B which is a 10 channel receiver now this receiver can support PPM S bus and I bus so so you have the freedom to choose all the options you want if I'm using it for my RC car, then I will mostly use the PPM signal. Uh, whereas if I want to use it for some other application, I might use the S bus or I bus. And what you should consider is the input voltage of your receiver. So although this has like 4 to 6.5 volt DC, but if you look closely, I have a battery slash VCC port on this receiver, which is the very first port on this side. So basically you can connect a 2 to 3S LiPo or even a 4S LiPo I believe mostly I'll be using a 3S LiPo and I've tested with the 3S LiPo so there hasn't been any problem as of yet but if your receiver has some limitations then you should use a PDB or a power regulator so just keep that in mind and let me just get rid of all the things that we don't need in this setup so firstly I'll just remove this cable that I used to use to connect the UHF to the radio so I don't need to use this then this was the adapter cable which I had to use again to connect these two units together. I don't need this as well. And this is what we will use mostly. So the first thing that I have here is a servo lead cable that I have modified by attaching a Dean's connector at one end. And this will basically connect to the battery slash VCC port of my receiver. So that way I can power the receiver through this cable so always make sure that you follow the polarity of the connections so so that's the power wire for my receiver so after I have the power wire connected to the receiver the next thing that matters is how I'm going to power the UHF transmitter so luckily in my case although the receiver has like 4 to 6.5 volt DC power range but what I've observed is if I connect a voltage meter on any of the ports over here the reading that I get is the same as the power input so if I supply like a 2s lipo battery power to the receiver the output will also be a 2s which is about 7.4 volts of whereas if I connect a 3s lipo I do get about 11 to 12 volts uh, from these ports so so what that means is if I connect a battery to my receiver, the receiver will actually power the UHF transmitter as well because my UHF transmitter needs anywhere from 2 to 3S LiPo. So I always prefer to power it up with a 3S power 
and now I can go ahead and connect my UHF transmitter to the receiver so this is the Molex connector that goes to my UHF transmitter so I'll connect this on the first port so you can see that I have the RC port over here so I'll connect this over there and there used to be a different connector over here but I've replaced it with a standard GST servo connector so that I can plug this in the receiver and just make sure to connect this uh, to whichever protocol you want to use so if you want to use IBUS, SBUS or PPM so just make sure that you use the appropriate port if your receiver just supports SBUS then just simply do that but in my case I'll be using PPM for now because I'll be using it for my RC car right now so So the UHF transmitter and the 2.4 GHz receiver are actually now connected. All I have to do is just power it up. So and of course make sure that your radio is bound to your receiver before you actually proceed with this. So I'll turn on the radio first. And now I'll connect the battery. So you heard that the UHF transmitter beeped first. Followed by my radio also had a beep. So that's the voltage of the receiver and the signal strength so so now if I turn on the power on my RC car so I've missed out one step over here and that is if you see that there's no input on the RC car itself so there's one thing that I forgot to do and that is to select the output mode on my radio so because I'm using the PPM channel, I'll have to set the output mode to PPM as well. So if I go to my receiver setup and if I go to output mode, so you can see that currently it's set to PWM. I'll have to set it to PPM and then hold the cancel button. And now you can see that the steering and the throttle is working so and the fail safe is also working because I've already set it up so so yeah this is how you can use your fly sky or any other 2.4 gigahertz receiver and use it as a relay for your UHF system and and then you can use it to place your UHF transmitter away from you or on a higher surface so that way your UHF receiver can get better reception and you can have better control as well so because if you remember my crosshair extreme uh, test I actually lost the control of my UHF system after about 720 meters or so because I was using this Dumbo RC radio at that point of time by using the DSC port to connect my UHF transmitter and with this radio I have to place the UHF module underneath the battery tray because there is no other place where I can mount it as such and it's always facing horizontal so so if the receiver for the Dumbo RC supported PPM or SBUS I would probably use that as a relay but I'm okay with the FlySky radio as well because this has a few extra features that you can actually use so like you can get to know the RSSI and you can even set up a few auxiliary switches if you want uh, if you're using like a flight controller on your RC car just to get all the OSD information and whatnot, so because I'm in the process of doing that so so you can see why I have this radio with me and how I'll be using it so and the battery is low so I'll have to switch this off so I'm pretty sure that you guys found this video helpful and so that's all I have to share in this video just make sure to subscribe and like the video and also comment if you have any other questions so thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one